हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा। I welcome you to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple for our Sunday festival. My <clears throat> my very sincerest gratitude to each and every one of you for taking your precious time to be with us. Today, each moment of life is infinitely precious if we utilize it for the purpose that Lord Krishna has given. Ayur Haridi Vai Pungsham, the Bhagavatam describes the nature of time in this way. That with every rising and every setting of the sun, we are one day closer to death. Time is such an inconceivable energy of God. Cannot see it, cannot touch it, taste it, cannot hear it. It is so subtle, invisible, but yet at every moment it is destroying everything. The highest of the Himalayan mountains time will make into little piles of dust, will burn out the sun, will evaporate every ocean, and it will devastate the life, the physical lives of every living being. From Brahma, down to the little insect. That is the power of time. Krishna tells us in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, I am time, devouring everything and everyone. Yayata mam prapadyante tamsta daiva bhajamya mama vart manu vartante manusya parata sarvasha but as we surrender to Krishna, Krishna reveals himself accordingly. The Bhagavatam explains, one who utilizes their time to sincerely hear and chant the names and the glories of the Lord with every rising and setting of the sun we are one day closer to eternal life. This is the most serious choice a human being could make within this creation. How we are going to utilize our moments to be devoured by time or to be uplifted into eternity with every moment. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastrakoi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhihoi. This beautiful verse tells that the association of a sadhu is the most precious thing within all of creation. That moment 
that lava matra, that one twelfth of a second, or as Shamdasji was saying, that amount of time where the upper part of the eyelid touches the lower part of the eyelid when you unconsciously blink. If he, that amount of time, if with an open heart, a service attitude, and an eagerness to hear, can open the doors to the perfection of liberation. Mahatsevam dwara mahurva moktes, tamodwaram yoshita sanghi sangam. Service to great souls opens the doors to spiritual perfection. But associating with people who bring our consciousness down again to the material plane, it opens the doors to darkness and bondage. A moment's association with a devotee of the Lord, a real sadhu, is the greatest of all wealth. Greater than all the property of this entire planet. Greater than all of the treasury of Indra, the king of heaven. Because we read about Indra, he's a devotee, so we offer our dandavat pranams at his feet. But still, Krishna likes to teach good messages through his devotees. He's not free of anxiety. Because with whatever he has, he has attachment to it. To his wealth, to his power, to his beauty, to his wife, to his gardens. Anxiety. No material arrangement can free us from anxiety. However much health, strength, fame, money, It's all temporary, and this material world is endlessly mutable with complications. The three gunas are always in a flux of interacting with one another, creating different types of situations. And the most painful thing is that false ego wants to be the controller and things are just beyond our control. Everything is beyond our control. Sometimes we're the, in the illusion that we are controlling. Whether you're the president of a nation with armies. I just heard recently the president of Poland with his whole family and defense ministry just crashed in an airplane and died. So he's controlling a whole country. And it's his own airplane. So we, we pray for all living beings that Krishna will bless them. But incidents like this are lessons to all of us, whoever we are. Padam padam yadvi padam natesham. This beautiful verse from the Bhagavatam describes that if we take shelter of Mukunda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the entire ocean of material existence is as easy to cross as a child stepping over the amount of water contained in the hoof print of a calf. But otherwise, this is a place where there is danger at every step. Why? Because everything is being controlled by time. Every breath you take, you're one breath closer to death. It's a death breath. <laughs> <laughs> 
even if you do pranayam. <laughs> which is good for health and good for mind and everything. But if we remember the Supreme Lord, Oma Pavitra Pavitro Va Sarvavastam Gato Piva Yasmadet Pundari Kaksham Sabhaya Pyantara Suchi. One who remembers the beautiful lotus eyed Supreme Personality of Godhead, even having passed through all situations of life, is purified wherever we're coming from, whatever we've done. Krishna is all pure. So how to utilize our every moment? The future, we do not know what will be. The past is dead. But to prepare for our future and learn lessons from the past, we have to be very, very keenly present in the keenly aware of the present. Each moment we have is priceless because we could remember Krishna. We could absorb ourselves in his holy name, the beautiful form of his deity, serving his devotees, serving him, hearing about him. Krishna gives us so many wonderful ways to fix our minds. The perfection of yoga is to become detached. The perfection of detachment is to become completely attached. The only reason we want to become detached from selfish desires is because they impede our attachment to Krishna. Otherwise, who cares about detachment? It diverts our attention away from the actual object of our love. In business management, it is taught in schools and seminars that how you utilize and manage your time is what's going to make you successful. But that is an eternal truth on the spiritual path. How we utilize every precious moment. Parikshit Maharaj had seven days to live. Now when we read these stories, which are great histories, if we really want to absorb the experience, the lesson, then we should have put ourselves in the place. If you were given the message, you had seven days to live, what would be your consciousness? Parikshit Maharaj was grateful. And what did he do? When you know you have seven days, you know how precious every moment is. I've told you that personal story of mine of when I was on that airplane and they announced about every five minutes there was going to be an emergency landing. The, syst the, the, the control systems for the plane became dysfunctional. They said, we're going to land at about 400 miles an hour. And when we started getting close to the runway, we saw there was about 25 fire engines, big trucks with their lights blinking. And there was at least that many ambulances with their lights blinking waiting for us. <laughs> Yes. So I started thinking about what I always tell you in my lectures, <laughs> that every moment is very precious. 
And really, you know, as we were coming forward, and it was very likely that we would all die in a matter of a minute or two, I wasn't thinking about, you know, whether I need a new computer. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about the gossip people are talking about me or anybody else. I was just, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. only thing in life was just to totally Im immerse myself in the sound of the holy name. There was nothing else worth anything. And offering prayers for all the devotees and all living beings. What else is there in life? So time is precious. Parikshit Maharaj with those seven days, he searched for the association of sadhus to spend every moment in the association of sadhus hearing about Krishna from people who loved Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada would tell us Parikshit Maharaj knew 100% for sure he had seven days, but none of us know 100% for sure we have even seven minutes. That is reality. How important time is to utilize. Janakya Pandit has said, a moment wasted cannot be bought back with all the wealth in all of the world. This human form of life is the crest jewel of Brahma's creation because it gives the opportunity for us to awaken the love of Krishna that is dormant within our heart. And Krishna is so kind. He's come within his name, so accessible everywhere, anywhere. Whoever we are. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasvigra. The name of Krishna is Chintamani. Will fulfill all the soul's innermost desires. Anandam Budivaradanam Pratipadam. The holy name of the Lord can awaken that ananda, that ecstasy that we have always been yearning, longing for birth after birth after birth and never finding. It's within us. The name is not different than Krishna. Absorb yourself in the name and you are with Krishna. And because Krishna is all attractive, being with Krishna, you cannot not love him if you're just aware. Like we have told that story of the person who became so attached to chanting Krishna's names, he couldn't stop chanting. Rupa Goswami explains his realization of chanting Hare Krishna. So when, when I chant the holy names of Krishna with my tongue, I desire many, many, many tongues. And when that name enters into my ear, I desire millions and millions of ears. And when that name enters my heart, it conquers my consciousness. And I know nothing else. That's his experience every time he recites the name of Krishna. That experience is available to all of us if we just learn the art of chanting. Trinadapi suni chena taror ibasi hishnuna amani namana dena kirtaniya sadahari. This is the art. When we are humble like a blade of grass, 
How many of you, when you, when you touch a, another devotee with your foot, you know, if you're a cultured person, you'll say, oh, and you'll take the dust and say, Haribo. But when we step on grass, do you even think about it? Everybody's trampling on the grass. We know what the dogs are doing on the grass. <laughs> Step on the grass and it'll just come right back up for the next person to step on. Humbler than a blade of grass. More tolerant than a tree. In the, the nature of a tree, Lord Chaitanya explained, is it's always in, eager to serve others. In the summer, we know the summer. In the noonday, 40 degree temperature in Maharashtra, the tree standing directly in the sunlight and while doing so gives you and me shade to keep us cool. And in the winter, trees covered with ice, but to keep us warm, give its wood to make a fire for us, for us to cook, for us to be warm. And in places like Maharashtra, it only rains during the rainy season. Rains finish in around the beginning of October. And the mango tree doesn't give fruit till May. That means November, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. That tree has not had a drop of water in about eight months. And yet it's giving us juicy, luscious mangoes to quench our thirst. That is the tolerance of a tree. Real tolerance is not just tolerating for the sake of tolerating. It's tolerating difficulties in order to give pleasure to Krishna and to serve others. And to offer all respect to others and not expect any respect for oneself. If one can just do that, then Krishna will be so pleased by that type of service attitude that he will reveal his divine love, his divine form, his divine pastimes in his name. And when we give, gain a taste for the name in that spirit, we can't stop chanting the names of the Lord incessantly. So this devotee was always chanting. But well, one day when he was going to respond to the respond to the forces of nature. He had his lota, his Brahman thread around his ear. And when he was about to evacuate, he was trying to hold his tongue because he was thinking, you know, when I'm doing such a contaminated activity and Krishna is non different than his name, I shouldn't be chanting. It's not like you bring the deity in the toilet with you. So he was, but he couldn't, his tongue was so incessantly addicted to the holy name. Hare Krishna, 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 I am, Hare, Hare. And a little boy was watching him, struggling with his tongue to try to somehow or other stop it from chanting. The little boy said to him, Don't you know Lord Chaitanya taught Nam Nama Karibada Nija Sarva Shakti Statrapita Niyamita Smarade Nakala Etadrisi Tava Kripa Bhagavan Mamapi Dura Daiva Mitri Sami Hajani Nanura There's no hard and fast rules for chanting the holy names. You can chant anywhere, everywhere, at all times. So he let go of his tongue. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna He was very happy. Lord Chaitanya was watching this in Puri. 
and he called the boy over. And the boy ran up to him, and Lord Shaitanya put him on his lap. And he said, because you have so much faith in the holy name of Krishna, you are my guru. And he became Gopal Guru Goswami, one of the great acharyas of our sampradaya. Badra's chariot, brand new silken ropes. Now, for those of you who have been to Puri Ratiyatra, you know how long those ropes are. There's about four ropes for each chariot, and each one is about a block long. <laughs> and there's thousands of people simultaneously pulling, and those chariots are huge and heavy. So he gave them seva. And they were so honored, they were so grateful. For, the, for those people from Kulinagram, if somebody gave them billions and trillions of rupees, it wouldn't have made them so happy as the opportunity to serve. This is our happiness. And this is a happiness that material nature cannot impede. Because we could always serve in some way. Like that South Indian Brahmin on the Narmada River. He wanted to make an offering for Lord Narayan. But he had absolutely nothing. He was just living on the side of the river. So he decided he would cook a feast. So he sat down like this and he started getting nice pots, golden pots. <laughs> And he went out to the forest in his mind and collected wood and made a fire. Then he went to the market in his mind and brought rice and milk and sabjis and everything else. And he was making a feast in his mind. And he made kheer. And after he made it, he let it cool down. And he was thinking, before I can offer it to my Lord, it should be nice and cool. So I'll touch it to see if it's, if it's suitable for offering now. And he touched it, and his finger was burnt. It was so hot that he came out of his meditation, looked at his finger, and his finger was actually burnt. And in Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan started laughing. And Lakshmi said, why are you laughing? He said, look at that finger of <laughs> Send for him now. I, ca I, can't, I can't resist this person's association. So the Vishnu Dudas came and brought him to Vaikuntha five minutes later. <laughs> so this story shows us that <clears throat> there's no impediment. Because Krishna's bhava grahi. He sees our intention. He sees our purpose. And as long as our intention is proper, no matter what obstacles, whether we can do it or not do it, that's the perfection of our life. Krishna tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita that whether you win this war or lose this war is not important. If you just try to fight for me, that's the perfection of your life. The physical result is not important. From the spiritual perspective, Krishna just wants to see that with all of our resources, we are trying our best with the right intent. So the residents of Kulinagram were given this instruction, bring a silken rope for Jagannath's chariots, and they were so happy. And then Sri Chaitanya, he revealed to the world in this very simple little incident how dear a devotee is to him, even for the simplest thing. He said, generations ago, there was a great devotee who lived in Kulinagram. His name was Gunaraj Khan. And he wrote a book called Sri Krishna Vijay. And in that book, there is one line. That line says, Nanda Nandana Krishna Mora Prananath. That the son of Nanda Krishna is my life and soul. Because of that one line that he has written, I am forever purchased by him. In fact, everyone who is 
a resident of Kulinagram, is most dear to Krishna. Even a dog living in Kulinagram will receive the great blessings and mercy of Sri Krishna and is very dear to the Lord because of that one line written with sincere devotion. Two of the residents, Ramananda Basu and Satyaraj Khan, <clears throat> they asked a question. Said, I am a grihasta. I'm a householder with a wife and a family and a children and an occupation. <clears throat> and I'm a very materialistic person extremely fallen. Please tell me, what is the spiritual path by which we can approach perfection? Because they asked with such sincerity, they were given the simple answer. Constantly chant the holy name of Krishna and when whenever possible, serve Krishna and serve his devotees, the Vaishnavas. The next question they asked, how do we know who a Vaishnava is? So many people may say they're Vaishnavas. So many people may think that they're Vaishnavas, but how do we know who to serve? What is a Vaishnava? What are the qualities? What are the symptoms? And Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who even once chants the holy name of Krishna is a Vaishnava and you should serve him. Now Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur <coughs> explains that what this means is to when we chant the holy name of Krishna even once with faith. To chant means to chant with faith from this perspective. Faith that Krishna is non-different than his name. Faith that this is a transcendental sound vibration wherein Krishna is connecting to all conditioned souls who take the opportunity. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if, one, if, if a person even once chants the holy names in this spirit, then they are freed of all sins, of all offenses, and therefore they are worshipable. The next year, the residents of Kulinagram came with the silk ropes. They offered it to Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. And as they were leaving at the end of the four months, they would all meet Lord Chaitanya and have intimate satsang. And the same devotees asked the same question said, please tell us, we are stuck in such materialistic ways of life. What is the way of perfection? And Lord Chaitanya explained, on a higher level, he said, constantly chant the holy names and always strive to be the servant of the servant of the servant of Lord Krishna, the Vaishnav. And the devotee asked, how do we know who is a Vaishnav? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, one who constantly chants the holy name. One is so attached, so addicted, addicted to the holy name, that they cannot, cannot get it out of their mind, cannot get it out of their hearts, cannot, 
cannot stop expressing their love for Krishna by chanting the holy name. You should worship that Vaishnav. The next year, they came back with ropes. <laughs> and as they were leaving, they asked the Lord the same question. This is how humble they were. So to understand, these are intimate associates of the Lord. They're not proud. They're not saying, we brought the ropes with so much effort, and we're a personal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we're an ecstatic love of God. And not only that, Lord Chaitanya has given us, he's divided seven Sankirtan parties every time the Ratha Yatra, and one whole party is the residence of Kulinagram. And here I am, Satyaraj Khan, the lead dancer of the party. Do you know who I am? <laughs> That's the way some people will think, even devotees. But he came back with the same question in front of everyone. It wasn't like a secret question. I'm very fallen. I'm very materialistic. I'm in the well of household life. Please tell me, what should I do? And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, always chant the holy name and be the servant of the servant of the Lord's devotees. And again, he asked, how do I know who is a Vaishnava? <laughs> and this time, Lord Chaitanya smiled. He said, <clears throat> A person who, anyone who sees that Vaishnav, immediately the holy name awakens in their hearts and they begin to chant, that is the first class Vaishnav and you should worship and serve him. So here there are three levels of Vaishnav. One is a person who one time chants the holy name with sincere faith. We should honor and respect that person. On a higher level, a person who is constantly chanting the holy names of the Lord. And through that process, Krishna Prema awakens within our heart. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadyaka Bunoi Saravanadi Sudhi Chiti Kodi Eyudoi that love for Krishna, prema, is within the heart of every living being. By associating with sincere devotees and chanting the holy names, that love is awakened from within our heart. And when such compassion awakens, when there is Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains, when love of God awakens within the heart like the, like the rising sun and dispels all the darkness of ego and ignorance, it manifests into this world as compassion for all living beings. And when we have that compassion, when we really care about others, when we are paradukha dukhi, when our pain is seeing others' pains and our happiness is to see others' happiness, when we really feel like that due to the awakening of love of God in our hearts, then Krishna within our hearts, Krishna within our name, manifests through us whoever we are. And when Krishna manifests through us, whoever sees us, if they are receptive, they naturally become inspired, impelled to cry out Krishna's name. <laughs> personalized echo. <laughs> Today we have two very special guests. We have Sriman Shamdasji 
Prabhu, who is one of the very, very compassionate Vaishnavas who actually established, he was one of the primary people to establish kirtan in the world of yoga in the West. Long ago, when the yogis were standing on their heads and bending their bodies into beautiful, grace, graceful asanas, which is very nice. Shamdas was going to those yoga studios and inducing them to chant the holy names of Krishna. But not just chanting the holy names of Krishna, because coming from the Pushti Marg, he has deep, deep faith in the path of bhakti, devotional service. That we are not this body, we are the eternal soul. And this material energy is Krishna's energy to be utilized in Krishna's service. And devotion is the only way to approach Krishna and awaken the perfection of the soul's constitutional nature of divine love. And Krishna's a person. Badanti tat tat vidas tatvam yajkena madvayam brahmeti paramatmiti bhagavani tishabdhyate. He's a great scholar of the Srimad Bhagavatam. There it is explained this non dual substance of the absolute truth has three features simultaneously, eternally. He spreads everywhere as the all pervading impersonal Brahman. He's in and, in and out of everything, like the sun, shine, that pervades the whole universe. Yes, God is Brahman. Simultaneously, Paramatma, the super soul who is residing within the heart of every living entity as the witness and the guide waiting for us to turn to him. and Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead, the Supreme Lord who Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadira Dira Govinda Sarava Karana Karanam, who is the supreme controller of all controllers, whose body, his form is Satchidananda. It is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. It is not only the essence of spirituality, it is the it is the source, the origin of everything that exists. Krishna explains in the Gita, all the beautiful things in this world that attract and charm our minds, all of it together, all the beautiful enchanting things in the entire creation is but a spark of the splendor of his form. Rupa Goswami said, if you are attached to the material things of this world, whatever they are, don't go to Keshi Ghat and the bake of the Yamuna. I warn you. Because Govinda is standing there in his three foam bending form. The moonlight is reflecting off his beautiful lips as he's playing upon his flute with his peacock feather and his eyes like fully bloomed lotuses. If you just see him even once, that beauty will intoxicate, will conquer you forever. That is Krishna, Bhagavan, as the Supreme Person. We can achieve emancipation from suffering in Brahman. We can achieve mystic siddhis and divine intuition through Paramatma. But ecstatic love, the ultimate object of everyone, Krishna, alone can reciprocate with that ecstatic love. <laughs>